Hey everybody, how are you li- how are you living? Hope you're alive and living in color. I hope God is good to you as he's been good to me. You watching because you are watching the ML seventy seven T V. Episode three hundred and fifty three, ladies and gentlemen. Um today is September eleventh, two thousand nineteen. And um It's 18 years ago when the tragedy of 9-11 happened. I watched a video of, you know, audio chatter and on there and what's going on in, on that day. And uh, I feel very sad because there were a lot of lives lost that day. I remember where I was on, on September 11, 2001. I was... Working at Ruby Tuesday at the time, and uh, and I was helping out one of my coworkers who was working the salad bar at the time, and making sure they get the, they need dishes. So you know, I make sure I got them dishes and all that. And all of a sudden, one of the waitresses say, "Oh, a plane just crashed in the World Trade Center." I said, "You got to be joking about this, right?" And it was all over the news. They turned the TV on. It was news. They usually um, turn on back then. Regis and Cal, uh, Regis and C- Kathy Lee were uh, was it Regis and Kelly. I forgot they they had to, they had the Regis show on in the morning, and but it all turned into the uh, September 11th attacks. And I remember. Watching that, and I'm like, and I could not. I, and we were all shocked, and we were all stunned, and we could not believe it was happening. So, like, now we, what are we going to do? Because the flight came from Boston to LA, and you know, and there were like four planes in the air. One crashed into the Pentagon. Another was about to hit the White House, but it fell before Camp David, I believe. And two planes hit the well. There were four planes that were hijacked by terrorists. And, and you know, it's it's so surreal that something like this would happen. We would have never thought like something like this would happen on American soil. And I'll never forget that day. I I remember we were, we were trying to uh, go about our business working and trying to, you know, get customers in, trying to do the best, camp, best with, you know, with business. Then the power went out, which was so strange. It was like, oh boy. You know, the power went out all over the mall. And they decided to close the mall early, I think, I believe, that day. And I remember, and then my boss, Joe Monger, at the time said, hey, um, we're going to keep, we're gonna wrap things up and we're closing down too. So I was like, okay. So he instructed me just get, you know, get these dishes cleaned out, get the, um, Get everything cleaned up. Get get the boxes and uh, and trash out, and then you can you can go. I said okay. So I straightened everything out in the dish pit, boxes and trash. I think it was around one one thirty, between that. And as I was getting the boxes and trash out, I looked outside the parking lot. There was not a single car, exception of our cars that were there. The whole entire mall was like parking lot was like a ghost town. And even my father, my father was still working at Sears at the time, and it's mind blowing. It was a ghost town. Like, what the heck is going on around here? And it seems like time stood still in our regular daily lives because of this tragedy that happened. And I totally, I totally remember. I had my Volkswagen Jetta at the time. I owned a Volkswagen Jetta. I'm not lying to you. Because the car I drive now is the Toyota, Toyota Yaris, but still, I had the Volkswagen Jetta. And it's totally my. It was mind blowing. It was crazy. And I got done the tr- box and trash. Made sure, changed the water and dish machine. You know, disconnected everything else. And it's like we're closing up shop for the like, like working at night. We're closing up shop. I wasn't so sure if I want to change my clothes. And you know, I, ch- I think I too quickly changed my clothes and got the heck out of there. And I went about went out by the back, and I remember racing towards my car and turned the key on. Went home. It was like not a single car was in the parking lot. I mean, and 
I only have not many, not many cars out there on the road. It's like, how did we lose power? Did somebody nail a transformer or something like that? Or or somebody was driving radically or freaking out because of what happened? And they decided to shut all the businesses down. And and I went and I was driving on the way home and I tried to turn on to find some music, but all it is was talking about the September eleven attacks and what happened and how it occurred. I came home, I tried to watch some T V. September eleven uh, the news. It was there was news on every, almost every single channel it had the September eleven uh, eleven attacks. And who'd have thought that who would have thought a tragedy like this would take over a television? It was, we didn't have any, now the internet was uh, starting to climb up a little bit, but wasn't much, wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, big as it is now, the internet. But still, I mean, my father was yet to get out of work. So I came home before he did. I remember discussing, I think we were outside, it was, it was, it was a nice day. Um, Weather-wise, but not a nice day for America. And uh, for that to happen, I mean, it was early in the morning. And I'm like, between 8 and 9 o'clock. I mean, 8 and 10 o'clock and all this happened. And I just could not believe it. And I mean, it took us a while to recover from that. It really, really did. And we had to shut down all major events, and because you know, for our safety, and that's understandable. And then George Bush said, "Hey, we need to go back to our regular lives, man. We cannot let this tragedy affect us forever. We can't let cannot let these terrorists win. We got to send a message to them." And I remember the WWE SmackDown uh, Live was the first event to happen after 9/11. And they'd pay tribute to America, which, you know, it was something to, you know, that, you know, you know, that, you know, changed our thinking about everything that's been going on in our lives, you know. We started, you know, being mistrusted towards the people of Arabic descent and everything else, which is kind of disgraceful. And I know because a lot of people have been triggered because of the events of 9-11 and what happened. And, you know, I believe that's why Donald Trump's been acting the way he's been acting. Because he's trying to prevent another 9-11 to happen. He's trying to prevent another uh, prevent another 9-11 from happening in our country. And I can understand that, you know, but I know he's going to, you know, a lot of people don't like his decision making, but you've got to understand, you know, I think in, in my personal, this is my personal theory only, I think... Donald Trump, who's a New York native, is probably ticked off about what happened at 9-11. And he's trying to do whatever it, take, whatever it takes to make sure another 9-11-like event will not happen in American soil ever again. That's just my take on it. That's why he's been the way he's been. I know a lot of Democrats, a lot of people have been upset about his decision making. But in my opinion, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think from, the, from his standpoint that, hey, you know, are you, he's a New York, New York native, and he probably was upset. And sometimes when you get upset and you want to do whatever it takes, if if, if tragedy happens in your life, all right, if something happens to you and it makes you so angry to the point where I got to do whatever it takes to make sure I'm safe, to make sure this country's safe, to make sure my family's safe, and all that, that's probably what President Trump's thinking. Now, I'm not defending the guy. I'm not a big fan of the guy by any stretch of imagination. I usually never talk politics on here. When it comes to 9-11, that's, that's my crazy theory on this. But, you know, and sometimes you have, you know, think about it. If somebody messes with your family, will you, are you willing to do whatever it takes to make sure your family's protected? I'm sure you would. I'm sure you, you're darn, I'm sure you, sure you darn tootin' would. You know? So that's how, that's how, that's what my theory is, you know, of why Donald Trump's the way he's been. He's trying to do whatever it takes to make sure our country's safe. You know, whether we like his decisions or not, you know, that's the way he's thinking. You know, we may not agree with it. That's what I get out of it, though. Hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, oh well. We gotta move on. Find someone else that can 
the job done. But we cannot forget the lives that those have been lost. My condolences and prayers to the families who lost loved ones on 9-11. Uh, the fire rescuers and people who sacrificed their lives tried to save others. You know, we will never forget you. We love you. I know uh, you're up in he- heaven right now and, you know... I'm sure you, they are missed. Your loved ones are missed. I know Selena Vega lost her dad, father on 9-11, so my condolences to her and her family as well. And, I don't know. we got to stay strong, America. No matter what. We'll never forget. And in, in the honor of those who lost their lives on 9-11, we should be resilient, keep on going, and never give up on our lives. They're with us in spirit, no doubt. Well, that's all the time we have on this show. God's life, light, love, and blessings to all of you. Catch you on the flip side. Pay attention. You might learn something. But we cannot change the past. But we can work, we can change our present situations to work for a better future for our lives. We'll never forget on this day. See you guys later. Have a wonderful, blessed day. Be strong.